Hey everyone, Mark Ferguson with Invest For More. Welcome to another real estate investing video. Uh, today, I wanna to talk about submitting an offer in a highly competitive market when heist and best might be present, uh, multiple offers are present. How do you get a property? Is it worth it going after a property in that environment? So, um, before we get started, of course, check out investformore.com. I'm over 400 free articles, tons of great resources, got my cash flow calculators, cash on cash calculators, my forums, my podcast, lots of cool stuff going on there. So, um, as you can see, I got some pretty sweet new bookshelves, but <laughs> um, when you're doing a highest and best offer, um, so many people get scared off and they don't even want to submit any offer at all. And I think that is probably the biggest mistake someone can make. I'm an REO agent, I'm a HUD listing broker, that means I list foreclosures for banks and the government. And I'm also an investor myself with my flips, with my rental properties. So I'm involved in highest and best a lot. And I see so many buyers when they see highest and best or they get asked for highest and best or they see there's multiple offers, they're like, oh, I don't wanna get in a bidding war, I'm just not even gonna make an offer, I'm not even gonna try. Why? Why would you not try to make an offer? What's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't get accepted. So you're in the exact same boat you are as not trying, but there's a chance your offer could get accepted and you get the house you want or the investment property you want, the personal residence you want. I have gotten many houses when I was in a highest and best situation. Um, do not shy away from it. Do not be scared of it. Embrace it. Take advantage of it. There are multiple offers present on a house you're trying to buy. That means it's a good deal. Other people are interested in it and you want to probably buy that house. If <laughs> you know depending on your situation, what you're looking to get it for. If nobody wants the houses you're trying to buy, then maybe that should tell you something that you're looking at the wrong properties. So, obviously in an ideal world, you'd be able to buy whatever house you want without any competition and the seller would always accept your offer but that just doesn't happen in reality. You're going to have situations where there will be more than one offer, the seller will ask for your highest and best offer, you'll have to submit it and see what happens. So, I'm gonna walk through first exactly what happens in a typical highest and best. Um, I think the banks kind of brought about the highest and best multiple offer situation. They were you know, going against a situation where they're getting multiple offers on their foreclosures because they're usually priced well, and they had to come up with a way that was fair to everybody. They did not create highest and best to try and drive up prices and screw over the public. They actually did it to try and be fair, which I know many people don't believe, but it is more true than not. And the reason they did that is because they get one offer, and maybe they're reviewing it, and then they get another offer, they're like, well, how do we handle this situation? We're already reviewing this offer. We don't want to just counter the first offer, not counter the second. You can't really counter two offers at once because what if they both accept? Um, so they came up with this idea of highest and best where they notify every party. So when they got more than one offer, every party's notified, hey, we've gotten multiple offers. Everyone is officially notified. We're gonna ask for your highest and best offer. What that means is, you figure out what the best offer you can make is, you submit it to us, and we will choose the best offer, or maybe we'll pass on all the offers if they're not that good, or there's a chance we could counter the highest offer if it's not quite where we wanna be, but if you give us our best offer, that gives you the best chance of negotiating with us or getting it accepted. Now, having the best offer does not always mean the highest price. Sometimes that means having a cash offer, sometimes that means having no inspection, Sometimes that means having no appraisal conditions. There's many different things that can be advantageous to the seller when they're accepting an offer. But don't get scared away just because they ask for highest and best. Um, I have even seen buyers who submitted an offer. Um, we got another offer or they were the second offer. The bank or even a traditional seller, many traditional sellers do highest and best now too said, hey, we've got multiple offers, we're gonna ask for highest and best, please give us your best offer. The buyer said, nope, I'm rescinding my offer, I don't want you to even consider it, I'm done. Why, why would you ever do that? Um, what's the point? I just, 
leave your offer there. If you don't want to change it, fine. Don't change it, leave it how it is, but submit it to the seller. Obviously you wanted the house at that price in the beginning. But why should another offer coming in make you want to rescind that offer? So don't let your ego, don't let your feelings get in the way when you're making offers on highest and best situations. Look at the numbers, see if it works, make the best offer you can. If they accept it, great. If they don't accept it, move on, find something else. Um, when I have bought properties that had multiple offers on them, I do. I have a number of different strategies, strategies and um, I've gotten properties a number of different ways. But what I always look at is how much I can pay to make the deal work for me. So sometimes that's offering list price, sometimes that's offering over list price, sometimes that's offering under list price. But almost always at least keep my offer the same. I'm not gonna rescind it unless you know I discovered something really wrong with the home or something that would change why I would offer. But um, I'll give you a few scenarios. So there's a REO property that I bought um, about a year and a half ago. Um, it was bank owned, that's what REO, real estate owned, it's bank foreclosure. They had a list price of I think 99,000. I looked at the house, hey, it looks pretty decent. Um, there's an owner occupied period of seven days. Nobody from owner occupied buyers bid on the home. It was open to investors, I made a bid. Obviously some other investors made a bid. They came back at me and said, hey, we've got multiple offers, give us your highest and best bid. I thought, okay, you know, I probably won't get this house um, because I can't offer full price. I'm sure there's lots of competition. I ended up offering 92,000. It was a cash offer though. Um, no contingencies really. I think I might've had an inspection and that was it. And a couple days later I said, hey, you got it. I'm like, I was not expecting it. I'm like, hey, great. I got it for 7,000 less than list price. Um, I thought there's no way I would get it. I mean, I ended up flipping that home and selling it for 175,000, I believe, after putting about 15, 20,000 dollars of work into it. Awesome deal for me. Worked out perfect. I didn't have to even offer list price. I didn't have to go over list price. But that situation um, necessitated me offering less than list price. On another situation, there's a house listed for 99,000. This is my um, 11th rental property, I believe. And that was just an amazing price. I mean, this house was worth probably 140, $150,000 um, after $10,000 in work or so. I knew I could not find a house like that easily. I mean, there's just no way. I've been waiting for deals for a very long time. This popped up. And at 99,000, I submitted my offer. Full price, you know, like, you know, a couple hours after it had been listed, um, the seller took their time responding, came back, said, hey, uh, we have multiple offers, you know, please give us your highest and best. I was like, all right, um, this, this was an estate sale. I, I looked at the numbers, figured out, I ended up offering, I think, 109000 So I was 10000 over list price, because I knew it was still an awesome deal. My numbers still worked and I didn't want to lose out on that property. And I ended up getting it at 109. It's another cash offer, um, no inspection, no contingencies on that one. And the selling agent had come to me and said, hey, we actually had some higher offers than yours, but because you were cash, because you had no inspection, the seller wanted to go with you. He felt you could close you know, without any problems where some of the other ones were financing. So obviously that was a huge advantage. Other ones I've offered list price. Other ones maybe slightly higher, slightly lower. The thing that I try and consider when I am doing a highest and best offer is not the list price. I mean, that's somewhat important, but I think people that get too concerned with that, I think the seller is just trying to drive it up or rip them off or something. I look at what I need if it's a flip, what price I need to be at to make the profit margins I want to make, if it's a rental property, I look at you know where I want to buy it. So I'm buying it below market with the cash on cash return I want. And sometimes that's list price, sometimes that's under, sometimes it's over. And I don't try and you know save a dime here, save a thousand dollars here, just because I can. I want to make sure I get that property if it's an awesome deal. I'm all about buying awesome deals. I don't want to lose an amazing deal because I was trying to save a thousand dollars on a flip that I knew I could still make thirty or forty thousand dollars on. I want to offer the most I can 
where I'm still safe, where I know it meets my numbers, if that makes sense. Um, another thing I always like to do, which is kind of fun, is like I said, I offered 99,000 or I said I offered 92,000. That's not really true. I actually offered um, like 92,789. I offered 109,342, just a crazy odd number like that. And I do that because if somebody else offers 109,000 and I offer 109,000, I want mine to be just a little bit higher just so I have that slight advantage. And having that kind of crazy weird number, sometimes it makes it look like I really thought about it hard, how much I could offer, I'm a serious buyer. I really put thought into this. I looked at all the numbers. You know, I'm down to the dollar and what I can offer. And I think that's some, you know, a little trick with the seller to make them think that I'm, I'm really on top of my stuff. I'm not just throwing out, you know, oh, I'm going to offer $100,000 and hopefully it sticks. And if it does, then I'll go beat them up on the inspection. No, I really thought about it. Um, and I think that helps me out too. And then also, also if someone offers 109 or 99 or 92 then I'm just a little bit higher, a couple hundred bucks, you know, is a couple hundred bucks. So um, there's a lot of different things you can do in highest and best. Um, when I'm submitting offers, I always try to get things in as quickly as possible, as fast as I can. Even if I know there's already offers on the table, I still try and do it as fast as I possibly can. Um, if I already know there's offers on the table, I will also usually come in with my highest and best, even if they don't ask for it because sometimes sellers will not ask for highest and best. They'll just take the best offer they get in the first day or two. So don't expect them to always ask for highest and best. If you know there's other offers present, give them your highest and best in the beginning. Maybe they'll get you the deal and they won't even ask the other offers. They'll just accept yours. That has happened to me as well. Um, so yeah, don't just give up on those properties. Don't say, oh, it's impossible to get a great deal on the MLS. It is possible. There's people out there getting great deals on the MLS all the time. I think my last 10 flips I bought were from the MLS. Almost all my rental properties I bought have been from the MLS. And I'm in Colorado, which is one of the hottest markets in the country. So it's definitely possible. Um, and don't be afraid to make those offers. All right, thank you so much for watching. Again, Mark Ferguson, investformore.com. Please check out my website. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to pump out as many um, real estate investing videos as I can. I'm a pretty busy guy though, so <laughs> um, they're not coming out all the time. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching and yeah, leave plenty of comments. Thanks a lot.